and welcome back to my channel. My name is Julia and I am just showing you guys all of the meals that I made this past week and what we ate. They're all different meals so I hope it gives you guys quite a bit of meal inspiration right now. I know the times are kind of crazy and the stores are crazy, everything is just crazy. So I hope your guys' spirits are staying up and if they're not, I hope this video helps you guys in some way, shape, or form. I just wanted to mention I post one of these videos every single Sunday, so if you are not yet subscribed to my channel and you like this video, maybe consider subscribing down below the video. One last thing I wanna mention before we get cooking. This video is in collaboration with my friend named Bev. I will put her channel linked in my description box below. She's also making one of these videos. But let's get cooking. To kick this week off, we made this delicious tortellini alfredo with some bacon, but this also could double as a meatless meal if you are vegetarian. I just had some extra bacon on hand that I had to cook up, so that's why I added it to this recipe. But anyways, I just cooked up three little slices of bacon, then pulled them off of my skillet and put them on a separate plate to cool down and drain the grease. I left the remainder of the grease on that skillet right there and then I pressed in about three cloves of garlic and I just stirred it occasionally until that garlic browned up. I'm just using this cheese and spinach tortellini but you could use any type of tortellini you could find in the stores right now. So into that same skillet with my browned garlic I just put in two tablespoons of some all-purpose flour and then I just whisked it together trying to incorporate it with the garlic and the bacon grease. And then I'm adding in a cup of my heavy cream. If you don't have heavy cream on hand, you could use two cups of milk or two cups of half and half. For the seasonings, I'm just adding a half a teaspoon of some Italian seasoning along with a little bit of some salt and pepper to taste. All right, my friends, so this is what makes this recipe so, so good. I just added in a half a cup of some mozzarella cheese with a half a cup of some Parmesan cheese, and I'm just whisking it together, and you will see how cheesy this is. This is my type of meal spot on. So now I am just adding in about two cups of some fresh uh, spinach. This step is totally optional. If you're not a fresh spinach fan, you definitely don't have to add it. Once the spinach is totally wilted down, you're just going to add in your drained tortellini noodles and then mix it all together so all of that tortellini gets incorporated in all that cheesy yumminess. So here is my plate all plated up. I just topped it with some of that bacon that we sizzled up earlier and then I just served it alongside of some Texas toast roll. This is from Great Value and then I also sprinkled some parsley flakes on top for some added color. And then of course we just had a side salad on the side for some extra vegetables. This meal was so so yummy and even easier to put together. For this night's dinner, we made some homemade pizza and we just used Kristen Stepp's homemade um, two ingredient pizza dough recipe. So the ingredients are pretty much one and a half cups of self rising flour along with a cup of some fat free plain Greek yogurt. I did not have self rising flour so to ensure that it will you know rise in the oven for me I just added one and a half teaspoons of baking powder with a little bit of salt and it turned out seriously perfect. And as simple as that, you just add the ingredients to your electric mixer. You could also do this by hand and you just turn it on a low setting and just let it whip together until it forms into a ball just like this. 
Onto a floured surface, I just pressed it out and tried to make it into a pizza shape the best that I could do. I just wanted to leave a little side note for you guys. You could also do this with calzones. So if you're trying to make a calzone, this dough would work perfect for it. So I'm just oiling the edges of my crust with a little bit of some olive oil just so that they get nice and crispy. I'm just using this Prego roasted garlic and herb marinara sauce, but you could use any type of marinara sauce you have on hand of course and then I know a lot of people like buffalo pizzas so you could also use some buffalo sauce instead of marinara sauce and then add some cheese and then add some buffalo chicken I'm sure that would taste delicious I just added some turkey pepperoni on top. I do prefer normal pepperoni a lot better actually. I just didn't think this had enough flavor in it as far as the pepperoni. I just also sprinkled some more cheese on top because your girl can't have enough cheese and then a little bit of some Italian seasoning for some added flavor. And then here is my plate all plated up. Of course, I just served it alongside of a little ranch to dip that pizza in. And then we had a side salad on the side. This dough was so, so good. It was a spot on recipe. I do recommend it. For this dinner tonight, we just made some coated chicken. I know this picture is not the greatest, but trust me on this one. So I am just starting out by cutting about 10 golden potatoes up into one half inch pieces. Over to my cookie sheet that I just lined with some parchment paper, I am just putting all those little golden potatoes on one half of that cookie sheet. I'm just sprinkling them with a little bit of this olive oil just to ensure that they won't stick and that they get a nice golden crispy crunch on them. For the seasonings, you could go at these potatoes with seriously any seasoning at all, but I do prefer this Greek seasoning to go with them. I just think this Greek seasoning is delicious with potatoes. Alrighty, so now let's work on the chicken. So I just have about half a cup of these panko seasoned breadcrumbs and then I'm also using a half a cup of some mozzarella cheese and then you're just gonna stir it all together. So now instead of like an egg wash or anything like that, I'm using pesto and I prefer the sun-dried tomato pesto and that is what we are going to be using today. But if you have normal pesto, that would work great as well. I just love sun-dried tomatoes. So I am adding about a fourth a cup of this sun-dried tomato pesto in a little tiny cup right here. Onto that same cookie sheet that I have the potatoes on, I just added in one chicken breast. I did slice this chicken breast thinly in half, so this is just one huge chicken breast. You could use however many breasts your family needs. I'm just seasoning it with a little bit of some salt and pepper on each side because you don't want bland chicken. And then I'm just putting on some of that sun-dried tomato pesto on each sides of the chicken, then I'm going to be coating it with that mozzarella breadcrumb mixture. Here it is all cooked through. I had it on 450 for about 28 minutes and then I flipped everything at the halfway point just so everything got cooked evenly. And here is my plate all plated up. I just have a little side of some fresh pineapple that I cut up and those potatoes were spot on as well as the chicken. I, we just served it alongside of a side salad. For this night, we made some Swedish meatballs. I've actually never made them before, so this was a first time for me. So I just have a pound of super lean ground beef in my mixing bowl right here, and then I'm just adding in some panko seasoned breadcrumbs. 
To season these meatballs up, you're just gonna use some chopped parsley, some ground nutmeg, some onion, finely chopped. I did not have any fresh onion or fresh parsley, so I used dried onion and dried parsley. You're also gonna use some garlic powder, pepper, salt, and those are all of my spices I used. The last thing you're gonna do is crack an egg in there and then mix it up all together. My spoon wasn't working the best to mix it up, so I just used my God-given hands and mixed it up with these cute gloves. Next, you're just gonna roll them into 12 large meatballs or 20 small meatballs. Onto my skillet, I am just pouring about a tablespoon of some olive oil along with a tablespoon of some butter on there and letting it melt down and then I'm adding all of my meatballs on there. Just make sure to have your meatballs on a medium heat and just flip them halfway and make sure they are getting cooked all the way through. Over here to my boiling water, I'm just adding four cups of some dried egg noodles and letting them cook. Once my meatballs were totally through cooking, I just pulled them off of the pan and then just put them on a separate plate and covered them with some aluminum foil. And then now we're gonna start on our delicious sauce. So I just melted about two tablespoons of some butter and then I am adding my flour and then you're just gonna whisk that flour and butter together to just make sure it is well combined. Now you're just gonna slowly add in your beef broth along with your heavy cream. And then also make sure you're adding it in slowly so your flour combines nicely and doesn't get any clumps in it. So now once it is all well combined, I am just adding in my tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce along with my small teaspoon amount of Dijon mustard. And then just whisk it all together. Once it comes up to a simmer, I just added in my meatballs and let it come together and simmer and infuse those meatballs with some great flavor. I hardly ever show you guys the sides that I make for dinner to go along with the meals, but tonight we just made some steamed asparagus. So to my little skillet right there, I have about two cups of water at most. And then I just squeezed in a lime. If you don't like the flavor of lime, just use a half of a lime or no lime at all. And then I'm adding in one huge clove of garlic along with about two tablespoons of butter and some salt and pepper. And then I just let that steam for about 10 minutes. Here is my plate all plated up. I thought this meal was good. I think it was lacking a little bit in flavor. So if I do make this again anytime soon, I will add some more spices just to kick it up a notch. But I just sprinkled a little bit of parsley flakes on top for some added color. My family does enjoy breakfast for dinner occasionally, so we are having some breakfast on this night. I just have this box of Idaho spuds. It is just some dried shredded potatoes. These are amazing and I got them at Costco. So if you do have a Costco and you have them, I highly suggest them. You just put two cups of some boiling hot water in them. And then once 13 minutes is up, you just put them on a skillet with some butter and then just cook those babies up. As you guys saw, I just seasoned my eggs with a little bit of some chili powder, salt and pepper, nothing special, but my husband likes his eggs pretty spicy, so that's what I do to make him happy. 
I just always buy the Costco brand of bacon. I think it is the least expensive and it is the best bang for your buck. And those are our super simple breakfast burritos we had for dinner on that night. These were super delicious and such comfort food. I don't know about any of you all, but I am ready for summer barbecues already. So to get this meal started on this night, I am just making this box of suddenly salad because it does have to refrigerate for a few hours. So that is what I'm starting with on this night. Let's get marinating. So I have all these ingredients I am just putting into this big glass bowl right here. These are just onion flakes, a little bit of paprika, honey, soy sauce, brown sugar, and ketchup. This is all gonna be the marinade for our chicken that we will be mixing all together shortly. mix it together and then I have two smaller size chicken breasts that I cut thinly in half just so that more flavor could get up all in them and then I refrigerated them for about four hours just so they got infused with flavor. Onto the barbecue grill these go. I always put some aluminum foil down first just because my grill is not the most expensive grill in the world and that's just what I have to do. Here is my plate all plated up. That chicken was perfectly seasoned. Of course, the suddenly salad was good. And then I just made a baked potato to go along the side. And in that baked potato, I just have a little bit of butter, sharp cheddar cheese, some bacon that I fried up in some sour cream, chives, salt and pepper. And this meal was comfort food. For this dinner, we are making pork carnitas quesadillas. I don't know if any of you guys remember, but last week I made some slow cooker pulled pork and I had some extra pulled pork on hand. I will link that video down below if you want to watch that. But I am just warming up that pulled pork right there, along with some olive oil in my skillet. Nothing too much to a quesadilla, but I just have some sharp cheddar cheese and I'm just putting it down right there. And then I have some of that pulled pork carnitas I'm just putting down and then the other side of the tortilla, I just put it with some olive oil on the skillet and then cooked that totally through. To pair alongside of those carnitas quesadillas, I'm just making a big serving of some guacamole. And my grocery store actually had avocados on sale for only 25 cents a piece. I don't know where you guys live, but typically avocados in my grocery store range between like a dollar to a dollar fifty per avocado, which is absolutely crazy and so much money. So finding these avocados for only 25 cents was a total win and I bought like eight of them. So for this super simple guacamole recipe, I just have some fresh chopped cilantro along with a clove of garlic. This clove of garlic is super large that I pressed in there. And then two medium sized tomatoes. I added the smallest amount of jalapeno to um, larger avocados and one lime along with some salt. Just to let you guys know, if you have some purple onion, that would pair amazing with this. I just didn't have any purple onion on hand, so that was just fine. I added all those ingredients together and then mashed them up in that bowl.
This meal was so, so delicious. Of course, I paired it with some of that guacamole and some sliced jalapenos on top. I kind of forgot how much I love pulled pork quesadillas. This was spot on. Another amazing recipe this week. I loved it. And that is it for the video today. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And if you are not yet subscribed, I hope you consider subscribing so you don't miss next week's video like this. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.